What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Ziggy Doom. How has everybody been? We haven't done a podcast in a little while. As y'all know, life happens and I get busy and um, some unforeseen events can happen and change plans. But as always, I'm still committed to y'all. Uh, YouTube is a is a tricky place when it comes to uh, ad revenue and views and likes and subscribers. Um, it, it's, it's one of those things where if you want to have a YouTube channel, um, I recommend you don't do it for the money. You know, I recommend you do it because it's something you enjoy doing, not because you, you're doing it in hopes of, of uh, gaining a lot of money. And the reason I say that is because when, when you look, when you go to YouTube, and I've been on YouTube for over 15 years. When you go to YouTube and you see these channels and you see these views and how many subscribers, millions of views, billions of views, uh, 2 million subscribers, 10 million subscribers, 100 million subscribers. The thing about that is um, you can actually pay. You can actually buy views, subscribers, comments, likes, shares. You can actually buy these things, right, versus gaining them organically. and on top of that, these channels that are really, really big, they have they have teams of people that actually dedicate all their time to promoting that channel, editing the videos, all the all, um, thumbnails and all that. They, they do research on things that are trending and certain algorithms that YouTube follows, and they push their videos that way. Now, you do have some channels that... The videos that they make, they're pushed organically, right? You put a video out there and it, it, it gains traction, goes viral, whatever. It just depends on YouTube's algorithm. And that, that algorithm is, is janky because it's not designed for people that are authentic about their channel and about their content. It's not really designed for that. It's designed for people that bring in the, mo the, the biggest audiences because the biggest audiences are going to attract the ads and the ads attract revenue. So when you're... Let's just say you're you have a big platform. You're you know a, a music star, a movie star, whatever. You're famous. You can actually pay people to uh, manage your channel, and you can pay for views, likes, shares, follows. You can actually pay for this stuff. And YouTube picks they 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 pick up that you're getting a lot of views, and now they take your video and put it in their algorithm, and it just randomly shows up on other people that watch YouTube's feed, and then your channel blows up that way. And that's how a lot of these big, big, big channels um, actually got that far. If you see a video with six billion views or nine million nine hundred ninety nine views, and all it is is a guy with a, a pencil and he throws it into the ceiling and it gets stuck, millions of views, you know. So you can't really control those aspects. So for me, my recommendation is if you want to do a YouTube channel. When you do it, do it because it's something you enjoy doing. Don't worry about views, likes, shares, subscribers. Don't worry about that. If people like it, they will come. If they don't, they won't. But as long as you enjoy what you're doing, put that content out there. And a lot of things that people do that is to impress others, like to, to get attention or fame and notoriety of others. And I, I don't agree with that model. I've always been the guy that I do what I do because I like it. I dress the way I dress because I like it. My hair is the way it is because I like it. I don't have any filters or let me take an hour and a half to doll myself up before I get in front of a camera, upload a video to the world. What you see is what you get, me and all my blemishes. So um, some of my friends, they, they don't like what I've done with my hair, my locks. Some of them, they like when I had the short hair. They prefer, you know, their opinion was, I look better with the short hair. My thing is with my locks, this isn't just a hairstyle for me. It's actually, it was actually a journey that I wanted to go on because certain things are very important to me. I, I'm a guy that's like, I firmly believe in, in, in natural, right? Being, being natural and, and things that you're, that you're born with, created with, that those are the necessities and all these other enhancements and, and extras makeup and, and hair wigs and fake mustaches and all that. I've never been a fan of that. So my my life journey for me was was important because I wanted to grow my hair out 
naturally. So with braids, you know, it's a, it's styles, and I've had braids, you know, I've had waves. But the lock journey for me was, it was invigorating because there's a certain phase when you grow locks, it's called the ugly phase, where your hair is short and shriveled up. And, and a lot of people, a lot of my friends, they can't do that. They cannot imagine going outside with their hair looking unappealing, I guess, to what society would call it. But see, I don't, that, that never bothered me. I've never, ever had to worry about going outside and wondering what somebody's going to say about me. Oh, man. I can't go to Walmart with dirty shoes on because people might clown me. Uh, you know, I, bro, I just, I just dug up dirt in a, a hole in my front yard because there's a leak and I'm trying to go get a shovel. So why am I finna try to go, you know, change my shoes and go to Walmart to get a shovel? Yeah, my shoes dirty. I was digging up dirt. Who, who cares? You know, so I've always been that, that guy. And I, I, I respect that too. When others do it, when I, when I see others go outside with, with confidence and, you know, However, they with whatever they have natural, right? I'm not saying go outside and look like a swamp donkey or something crazy like that. I'm just saying, you know, everyone has the right to do what makes them feel better. That that's fine. I don't knock that. But when you can't even go outside, just you know, let me let me wake up, wash my face, tie my hair up, and and go get some groceries or go to the mailbox. Yes, I know people that that have to put on makeup to go to their mailbox put on an outfit to go to their mailbox. Yes, I'm, I'm, it's ridiculous, but when you, when you can't be comfortable in your own skin, how are you, how, when will you be able to, to know what you like and what you enjoy? When every day you look in the mirror and you say, what can I do to my face that'll make people like me? What can I do to my, my skin that'll make it more appealing? When that's the focus of why you doll yourself up, that, that, that's crazy. You know, I, I have certain freedoms that some people don't because I don't care what no one says or thinks about me. So I can go into the world however I look and whatever's going on around me, the background noise, I, I'm oblivious to it. So for me, my life journey, yeah, there's some people that don't like them. You know, they, they don't they don't care for them. And that's fine. I there, There's no animosity. There's no anger or resentment. You know, my life journey for me was being able to to endure all those phases. And I love my hair. I've never liked short hair. I, I've never liked short hair. Yeah, I had waves and all the fades and all that, but I never liked that. When I was in the military, the short hair, I, I didn't like it. I looked in the mirror like, this is so, ugh. So when I grew my locks out and they wild and crazy and my gray hairs and everything, it just, it was invigorating. And I love my hair. So, um, but, you know, that's the thing for me. Uh, a lot of people, they will make their channels, their content, they have to put this image on like guys, there are, there are people, um, they call them influencers that actually there's houses in California that, that, that companies buy and they rent them out to influencers. And all these influencers do is they, need, they record videos in these big old houses and everything is rented. So they have this appearance of having these big houses and nice cars and all that stuff is rented. See, the, the big firms realize, hey, kids like looking at kids who look like they have a lot of money. So they literally, literally in California, there's areas that they have houses bought by firms and influencers rent them out for TikTok videos, YouTube videos, Instagram videos. And people see this and they think, wow, this person got this big old house, this million views and these challenges and skits and I want to do that. And they try to emulate it and they get frustrated when their videos don't go as viral as the ones they see. And then you got people that just let me record something absolutely crazy to see if it goes viral. Let me eat eight bowls of, of chicken, three gallons of milk. Let me do that in front of a camera and see if it goes viral. And that, that's 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 that is what has tainted social media, in my opinion, as far as the, the going viral, because controversy sells. If it's something bad, it's going to go farther than something good. And for me, my, my, my integrity and my moral compass won't allow me to put a video on the Internet just to get views. No matter what is going on, how viral it is, because it's not just about me. It's also about my, my children. See, when I put something on the video, 
when I put something on the video, when I put something on the internet, not only can the whole world see it, but my children can see it also. So if I can't explain to them why I did something, I put it out there to the world, then I'm not going to do it. I don't care how viral it goes. I don't care how much fame it gets. I'm just not going to do it because I would rather have their respect than six, seven, eight million people's respects. And it's so crazy. People will say, oh, man, you got X and X amount of subscribers. Wow, you 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 must be uh, popular. Now, I don't I don't see it that way. I don't judge someone's fame or popularity off of how many followers they have. Like, come on, man. I, I, I don't do that. Like, do you have substance? Sure, you have a YouTube channel with 300,000, 400,000, 2 million subscribers, and you got this content that's silly, but who are you in real life? Is that you in real life? Or when you turn the camera off, you a totally different person. There's a, uh, there's a channel with this woman. It might be taken down now. She had a... Uh, she had a bunch of kids and all her videos, you know, the kids were happy and they were recording. Look what we did at the store and look, we opened up this and oh, oh, uh, Kaylee had an accident, huh? And they did a, th there was like a documentary on it. And come to find out when that camera went off, that lady was dogging those kids. It was actual child abuse going on. And um, I think, I think she ended up killing herself. Uh, unalive. And I'm sorry, I can't use that word. YouTube and the algorithms. But it's just stuff like that. And for me, I, I don't, I don't want to be that way. I don't want to be somebody in front of a camera that I'm not when the camera's off. And everybody that knows me, they know Ziggy, do, I don't, this is me. The no filter, uh, unpopular opinions, all that stuff, that is, that is me. So even with my music, you know, I'm not a rapper. So when someone says my rap music is trash, I don't take offense to it because I'm, I'm not a rapper. And um, even my music, right? Like, it's what's popular now seems to be the the drugs, the 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 oversexualization, the partying, the gangs, you know, all that. That, but that's not that's not my style. So, I mean, I can rap about it, sure, of course. But why would I rap about things that I I don't even do, I don't even support or endorse, just to get fame? And the industry is so it's, it's actually easy to make it in the industry. If you want to make it in the music industry, you can form all those those trends and stigmas. And eventually, if it gets if it gets, goes viral enough, you can get in the industry. And I, that's just not me. I don't I'm not going to sell my soul, per se, for fame. And I don't really care about attention. I've never wanted to. You know, gee, I hope everybody notices me when I walk in a room. I actually prefer people to just leave me alone. I don't do a lot of talking in in the world. Like when I'm out or I don't do a lot of talking, even at work. I, I don't like talking that much. If it's a joke or, or a situation, you know, I can chime in, chop it up. But for the most part, I just like it to be quiet and a lot, not a lot of just random talking. Just as I've gotten older, dude. I just feel like people just talk, just, just talk too much. Just need to shut up. A lot of people talk too much. Just shut up. Like you're not saying nothing at all of value. And I get it, right? Ziggy just shut in. Well, everybody ain't like that, Ziggy. I, I get all that. But we, we got, y'all don't think we got enough of people just running their mouth for no reason? Just talking for no reason at all. Just to hear themselves talk. And you got the insecure people that's usually... Usually the most insecure people, they're going to walk in the room. They're going to be the loudest. They're going to make sure everybody can hear them. And I, I personally think that's an a, a insecurity. I think they can't go in the room, sit down, and shut up. Because now they're going to feel like no one notices them. No one cares about them. They don't have any worth. So they make sure they go in the room and be the absolute loudest for no reason at all. Now, there's people that are that's just naturally who they are, right? You know, you got the you got the class clowns, you know, people that are just the, the, the life of the party. My best friend, he's like that. Wherever he, wherever he go, he's going to like like lighten up the mood. That's just who he is. But he has always been that way since I've known him. And he's just and we know him that way. Like if if 
if if dog go in the room and he's quiet, I'm telling you now, everybody gonna be like, dog, what's, what's up, bro? You good, man? What's, what's going on? Dog go in the room and he's gonna talk, but he he's a he he's a a, a, a joyful person with everyone. Dog don't be walking around having beef with no one. And that's probably one of the reasons he's my, my best friend. Cause bro, we ain't got, I don't got time for all that beef. The drama, the hatred, the negativity. I don't have time for that. You know, I crack my jokes. I'll say what's up and I go by my business. If you got four houses and the nicest shoes and the nicest clothes, good for you. I, I just, I don't have time for the hatred, negativity. Never, never did any of that. Um, let's talk about some things in the news, man. I didn't want to make this podcast anything specific. I just wanted to uh, reach out to you guys and just chop it up a little bit about some stuff. Nothing major, nothing, nothing, nothing pressing, but just world, world events. Go to my computer over here. Let's see what we got. Rapper Lil, Lil Dirk arrested in Florida on murder for hire charge. Everybody from Chicago that listen to rap music know who Lil Durk is, so I'm not finna give y'all the background on him. He actually went to the same high school I went to. He went to Robeson, even though that, that high school don't exist no more. But he went. He actually went to Robeson. He's a Chicago rapper, drill music, yada, yada, yada. Basically, one of his friends snitched on him. Basically. We ain't got to get into the intricacies of it. One of his friends snitched on him. And here's the thing about, about snitching. If you are not a part of something, let's say you are a lady in, in your house and you witness a murder and the police come to you and they say, hey, uh, did you see who did it? And, and, and you say, yeah, that's not snitching. Understand that is not snitching. You can't say, yeah, that old lady snitch. No, that ain't snitching. Snitching is when you in the streets selling drugs, killing people, you know, doing living that life. and now. You get caught, and the judge and the judge and the police tell you, "Hey, we'll give you time off if you tell us who else doing it." That's snitching. When you like, oh yeah, he did it, he did it, he did it. That is what snitching is. I I I, I don't like when people just call other people snitches without understanding context of what snitching actually is. You know, if you at work stealing things, and uh, somebody else at work stealing things. And you get caught, they say, hey, who else stealing? And you tell on that person, that that's a snitch. If you ain't at work stealing nothing, you ain't at work stealing nothing, and then somebody's stealing, and then they like, hey, uh, you know who's stealing? And you like, yeah. That, that's not snitching. As, as, as unpopular as that opinion is, that is not snitching. The snitching, you know, tattletelling, tricking, whatever, but I'm talking about snitching. Is, is, is levels. So his friend in the streets about their life, went to jail, got some time, and he wanted, they, they was going give to give him some time off. So he he told on Lil Dirk. That's basically what, what happened. And um, that happens a lot. See, all these guys in these gangs and groups and everybody, my friend, and we from the hood, we from the Sarah, bruh, you'll be amazed at how many people start singing to the high heavens when they get in trouble with the law and now they got to they facing life because some people don't. Some people can't give up freedom. Some people can't can't do that box. I've been in boxes. I've been in, in locked rooms. You know, I sit there quietly. I'm good. I'm I'm but I'm built differently. Y'all don't 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 take my examples and say, oh, wow, I want to be. I'm built differently. Okay, I, I've endured things that normal people shouldn't have to, but the average person can't sit in a box. So when you tell somebody, oh, I'm finna take your freedom away. Your freedom, your livelihood, all that. Oh, well, what do I got to do to 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 minimize it or eliminate you taking my freedom away? Yeah, just tell on everybody. You'd be a lot of you'd be amazed how many people start singing. All these tough guys, homies, friends. I'm from the street. I ain't never. They they get faced with them numbers, them 12 months, 24, 36, 48 months. Because they don't they don't like to put it in years. They put it in months because that makes it sound longer. 576 months, <laughs> you know, versus 12 years, it, 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 it just hits differently. So, yeah, he basically, that's what it is. And I mean, I have, I mean, I don't, I don't feel sorry for him. Like I, 
I can't, first of all, what do I, what would I feel sorry for? He's a millionaire, right? Millionaire, multimillionaire. One thing about me, I don't even know how to feel sorry for people that are, how do you feel sorry for a multimillionaire? Outside of a family tragedy, right? Son, family tragedy. But going bankrupt, uh, getting arrested for drugs, trafficking, the, the, the pedophilia stuff. How do you feel sorry for that kind of person? Dirk is a multimillionaire that lived in the streets. Murder for hire. How do I feel sorry for some, somebody like, man, that's messed up what happened to Dirk? Is it? Is it messed up what happened to him? Well, what happened to him? Oh, man, his friend uh, told on him in a murder for hire plot. So he kills, he pays somebody to kill somebody. And somebody told on him. And that's bad. Now, the snitching part, the snitching part is bad, okay? You don't, I mean, if you live that life, and you, you shouldn't snitch, but most people snitch. So that's bad. But am I like, man, free Dirk? Or, nah. Nah. Dirk don't know me. All these people in the street that's in the comments, man, Dirk, old G, you don't know. Dirk don't know y'all. He don't care about y'all. Y'all just fans. And a fan, fan is short for fanatic. And we have a lot of fanatics on this earth. We got Taylor Swift fanatics. We got Beyonce fanatics. We got LeBron James fanatics. We got Dirk fanatics, you know? So that man don't care about y'all. I mean, his boy snitched. He broke the street. He broke the street code, but you can't be, you can't be hiring people to kill. If you're going you to hire somebody to kill, then you have to, be, you have to stand on the consequences of that, period. If you stand on the consequences of your actions, Okay, cool. I got a, I got a dozen kids. I got to stand on the consequences of my actions. That's that's what I do. Stand on those consequences. I ain't out here crying and oh my god, what am I gonna do? I stand on the consequences of my actions. Whatever bad choices I've made in my life, I've always stood on that those consequences. If I got caught, you know, I, I've cheated in relationships, and we it's not right. I've done it. If I got caught, I had to stand on that. Like, yeah, you know, that was whatever I've done. I just I have to stand on it. I don't go blaming the oh, they, it's their fault or it's the it was raining that day and I couldn't see and I, nah, I stand on it. And if if everyone did that, if everyone stood on 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 whatever they choices they made, I think I think that that would help them. That would they would be better off in the long run. Because you you tend to make less bad choices when you stand on the ones that you do versus blaming others. If you're going to blame somebody else for the bad choices you make, you're going to keep making bad choices because you can blame somebody else. But when you stand on the bad choices you make, you tend to do them less. I don't know if that makes sense to y'all. It may not. But if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. And as we get older and wiser, we, we tend to know wrong from right. Right? Like, bro, you, you shouldn't get out here paying people to murder people. Like, what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, so, yeah, that's dirt. Where we at? Uh, McDonald's president, very confident customers can safely eat at a restaurant amid E. coli breakout. Uh, <laughs> I don't eat McDonald's. Um, I stopped buying McDonald's at the beginning of this year um, because it's a, it's a waste of money and the food is not good. So I stopped eating McDonald's beginning of this year, I'm never going, I'm never going to buy McDonald's again, ever. I'll get it for my, my children. Um, but I'm me personally, and that's their choice. I don't make them do it, you know, but I also don't want to be the parent that, oh, you can't eat McDonald's. So yeah, the E. coli outbreak is bad, man. They got, it's in a, it's in a quarter pound of meat and I don't know how they're going to overcome that. E. coli can kill you. Usually it makes you really sick, bubble guts, whatever, but it can't kill you. And here's the crazy thing. Everybody knows McDonald's. So everybody's going to know about this E. coli outbreak. Do y'all think McDonald's going to lose some money? Y'all think McDonald's going to lose some money from this? I don't. I mean, of course, the PR, I mean, they're going to lose money in the beginning because of the PR aspect of it. But people are not going to stop eating at McDonald's, especially America's. We got, we got the fattest people in the world, fattest, laziest, like I can say that, I don't care how you feel about it, fat, lazy, and 
McDonald's knows this. They even the ingredients in the McDonald's food in America is different from other countries. Did y'all know that? Because they know Americans are fat, lazy, un- uninformed. So they're gonna put food in, the, and they're gonna put ingredients in the food to make you actually want to eat it more. They put ingredients in the McDonald's food that fills you up less, but makes you want to eat more. So uh, McDonald's ain't this ain't gonna hurt McDonald's because people gonna still eat it, especially Americans. They gonna they, somebody somebody will watch this podcast right now and be on their way to McDonald's. <laughs> now it was a personal choice for me. I just I'm. My goal is to not eat no more fast food. This year is McDonald's. Next year is going to be Burger King. Year after that, Wendy's, Taco Bell, Sonic, you know. And I'm, I'm, elim- I'm, I'm just trying to eliminate all the fast food restaurants completely. That's my goal. But, yeah, McDonald's is, is, is ugh, like, I, I wouldn't eat it. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. The price of it is crazy. Y'all, y'all might not remember, but but you could get a whole McDonald's meal for five dollars. That was in the eighties. You had five dollars. You could probably get two meals, I think. But with five dollars, you can get a meal from McDonald's. I don't even think you can get a burger with five dollars in McDonald's now. So why am I finna pay more for this terrible food? And these companies have figured it out. Man, y'all y'all do more with less. We, I want to say y'all, we, we all in this together, right, YouTube? <laughs> we do more with less. What that means is some, some companies will charge more and people who make less will still spend more to get it. If they made, if they took a pack of cigarettes and made it $30 a pack, y'all think people going to stop smoking? No. These Jordans, man, Jordans used to be I don't want to lie. I don't. Y'all can fact check me. They, when I grew up, Jordans was not three hundred dollars. Okay, I know that they were not three hundred dollars. Now that is like the norm, two hundred eighty. And all they doing is taking the same shoe and bringing it out years later. Jordan Thirteens. They've re, they've re released Jordan Thirteens at least five times. Do you hear what I'm saying? And people will buy them five times, take them, put them on the wall, and say, here's my Jordan 13s from, 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 from 94. Here's my Jordan 13s from 2004. Here's my Jordan 13s from 2014. They will do that. And it's like, what? So, and it, if you got money like that, do cool. Spend your money how you want, whatever. But when you are making those videos and let me go buy 500 million things. The people that watch you, they, they, they be wanting to live that life too. So you got, you got certain types of um, followers, right? You got people that, that look at, at what you do and like, you know, enjoy watching it because they can't get it themselves. So they may get it. They may get enjoyment out of you doing it. Then you got the people that want to actually do what you do, but they can't. So they try to emulate it. And that's when I think it gets bad because you're, you're, in effect, faking something to appear one way when you really not. And we do that all the time with money. How many people, how many people just pretend like they have all these boatloads of cash and dress nice and nice car and all that? How many people do that? I think that is crazy. I, I don't even understand that. I, I, think, I think every day of my life, I tell, uh, try to tell a new person that I have no money. I, I don't have money. I'm poor. I enjoy being poor, actually. I like having nothing but the bare necessities. I enjoy that. My clothes, not expensive. Hair, not expensive. You know, I enjoy that. My vehicles have 200, 300,000 miles on them. I'm, I'm that kind of guy. I'm, I'm, I, don't, I'm, I, don't, I don't know about the flashy stuff. I just never, that was never me. But I guess that's a cultural thing too, right? But maybe not even then, because some, some kids, you raise them a certain way and they still want to be another way. So it might not even be a culture thing. So yeah, McDonald's, I, I wouldn't eat their food. So, but people ain't going to stop with the E. coli e. Break, breakout. 
Teenage Walmart employee was found dead in store walk-in oven by her mom, who also worked there. Yeah. I just looked that one up a little earlier. Yeah, there was this, this girl who worked at Walmart, and allegedly she walked into the oven. It's a walk-in oven at McDonald's. She walked in. The door closed behind her. The oven turned on, and she was baked alive, essentially. And her mother worked there, also heard her screams, and went in there and found her. Try to imagine your child at work with you and you hear them screaming and you run to wherever they are. And you open an oven door and they they fall on the floor, burnt and, and not alive anymore. My son works at Walmart with his mother and that kind of hit home for her. It kind of hit home for me, too, because I'm paranoid when it comes to my my children. I always think the worst like. I. I overprotect my kids. I do. I ain't even going to sugarcoat that. I overprotect them because growing up, I wasn't protected at all. I had nobody. So I think that's probably why I overcompensate for them. You know, some of my children, I, I, I just overprotect them all the time. I will defend them to for whatever. And that's not good, first of all. You, you got you to gotta let your kids grow up and go out into the world. Okay, you have to. For me, it's just personal because I know the world is a, a really rough place and, and you know, my children have certain needs and I understand it, but the world may not. So I'm kind of protective. But yeah, anyway, so found her daughter dead. Now they're trying to, they're saying this is going to be a long investigation, right? Because they don't know if it was murder or if it was suicide. And, and the public is mad about it because it's like, are y'all serious? How can this be suicide? Now I understand. Insurance companies, y'all, this I'm gonna put y'all up on some game. This is a crazy world. Insurance companies pay out based on the death certificate, right? It's a I forgot what it's called. EOB. I can't, I can't remember. It might come back to me later on. Basically, they pay out based on the cause of death. Now, murder as a cause of death, that that's a payout. Suicide as a cause of death is not. Insurance companies ain't finna pay you if you killed yourself. So the 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 police are saying it's gonna be a long investigation. We gotta see if it's murder or suicide. And they got all these videos. How can she have killed herself in the oven? The, the only way you can turn the oven on is from outside, and you can't turn it on unless the door is closed, which means she would have had to be in there with the door closed before it even turned on. So how do you commit suicide? So if they rule out suicide, which they should, because there's no way to to start the oven from the inside, then they can go to homicide. Now they can look at security cameras and stuff like that. I don't want to tell a policeman how to do their job because I ain't a policeman. I'm not a detective. But I, I mean, there's there's general sense. You can kind of put two and two together. Like, yeah, guys, I don't think this 19 year old from India came all the way to work at Walmart and kill themselves in the oven. Oh, that kill word. I'm sorry, YouTube. I'm alive. They're going to they gonna demonetize this and they're not going to put it in the algorithm. So ain't nobody going to see this podcast. It's all good. Um, it's not suicide. So let's go with homicide. Let, let's start there. Let's look at the security cameras. Let's look at who was on work at work. Let's interview them. Let's let's do a little bit of background checking on them, you know. But I don't that one. That was bad, man. I couldn't even imagine. And when I think about it, it it's just I, I just I, I can't imagine. So I can't even think about it if I was in that situation, what I would do. But I know from that day forward, everything in my life will change everything. So. I mean, you know, thoughts and prayers go to that that woman. She even got a fundraiser up. She's raised like one hundred and forty thousand dollars so far. So. Seeing our thoughts and prayers to her. It's on the internet. Uh, gu- See, I'm going to butcher her name. Gu- Guriz- Gurzimran Kaur. Wow, I butchered that, y'all. Yeah, gu- Google it. it it's, it's on the internet. It's on all the social media platforms. And last one. Last one, y'all. Menendez Brothers resetting scene is backed by the DA. What's next? So if y'all know who the Menendez brothers is, they, they killed their parents. 
they killed their parents because their parents were abusing them. And now they want to be resentenced from life without the possibility of parole to life with the possibility of parole. And if they get resentenced, they will be released immediately. And that's what the DA and everyone is fighting for because um, the, the case was controversial because the, the boys were, were underage, but they killed their parents. And I think the judge at the time was, was like one of these old school, old fashioned way of thinking guys, you know, honor thy mother, honor thy father, you killed your parents, you're going to jail. But when you look at what, what their father did to them, it's like, okay, well, murder isn't warranted. However, I think these guys have served enough time from from teenagers to now. I don't think they're going to go out into the world and, and kill and be a detriment to society. See, that's what it's about. Parole. Right. Are you going to go out into the world and be better or be worse? And based on what they did and what they went through, there's no way. In my opinion, I'm not a judge, I'm not a DA, not a financial advisor, lawyer, none of that. I'm just a guy. Um, I don't think they're going to go out and be detrimental to society. I, I'm willing to bet if they, if they were to get released, they're going to be millionaires. They're going to get book deals. They're going to get interviews. They're going to get endorsements. So, you know, I don't think they should be there for bar, barring the crime or what they did. And that's what they're trying to do uh, with this resentencing thing. So speaking of honor, thy mother and thy father, <laughs> we... I don't know what happened. The, you know, every generation is different. Gen Z, Gen X, Gen Y, boom, baby boomers, millennials. Every generation is different. But certain things should traverse across all those generations. I think respect is paramount. I'm a big, big, big person on respect. I think no matter what generation you grew up in, everybody had a mom and a dad. Some of our moms and dads wasn't the best moms and dads. Some of them was, was pretty, pretty, pretty crappy. Some of them was okay. Some of them was great. But this, uh, respect across all those, those platforms, platforms, generations should be paramount. Now, in the Menendez cases, they were being sexually abused by their father and all those things. Their father clearly had no respect or, 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 or um, disdain for them. So they, it was fight or flight. They went into fight or flight mode. They fought, you know. So we're not going to get to that extreme. Everybody don't have a Menendez mom and dad. But I've never heard of a such thing as a perfect parent. I don't even think that exists. If you meet somebody that say, I'm a perfect parent, you stay away from that person because <laughs> there's no perfect way to parent. Let me tell you that right now. Most people that know me know my stance on whoopings. I've heard people say the problem with kids nowadays is they don't get enough whoopings. These parents need to whoop their kids more. First of all, what is a what is a whooping? What is a whooping? Let's start there. What is a whooping? Is it when you take a belt and put it on your child's backside? Is it when you take a switch and hit them across their back? Is it when you take your hand and punch them in their chest? What is a whooping? And I've even heard parents say, beat their, you know, ASS. Beat your child. Are you hearing yourself? You think you need to beat your child for them to be better? I, I don't know about that one. Um, so Whooping, not whooping, because I don't want to, that's a whole nother topic for another day. Whooping, not whooping. Respect is paramount. If you reside with somebody and they put a roof over your head and clothes on your back, food on your table, and keep you safe, I think that warrants respect. Period. It don't even have to be your parent. It could be your guardian. It could be the next door neighbor. If they put a roof over your head, provide for you, then I think respect is, is warranted. It's reasonable to say, hey, you should respect me because of what I'm, you know, these things I do for you. But would you believe there are kids out here that don't think they have to respect their parents? They think that if, if their parent doesn't do certain things for them, then they don't have to respect their parent. And I, you know, because I, 
I, I watch these videos. I, you know, I try to do a little bit of research just to try to see what's going on in the world because I'm a shut in. I don't go out and socialize much. But it just seems like now social media is influencing children to to feel as if they're on the same level as their parents. And that's just that's just not that's not the case. A child and a parent cannot can. How can they be on the same level? How can the creator be on the same level as the created? I, even when they become adults, you, you, you know, they're still they're still the child to the mother and father. So they still ain't on the same level. They just but all adults. And I, I don't know. Everyone, everyone, you know, addresses their issues, however they address them. The Menendezes, they, the little Menendez brothers did what they did because of what happened to them. But I've seen kids kill their parents because they told them you can't play a video game. I've seen kids retaliate because they say you can't be on social media. And it's like, why? Where does that come from? So it's, it's, it's one of those deals, man, where you have to find a balance, I think. What, what happened to the Menendez brothers was un, uncalled for. That, that's totally on the parents. Because as a parent, we're supposed to nurture and protect our kids. If, if our kids are afraid of us, we're not nurturing and protecting them. There's no such thing as a kid should fear their parent. Fear. What does fear do, though? What, what do people do when they're afraid of something? What do they do? They avoid it. They, they, they stay away from it as much as possible. But kids should respect their parents. They shouldn't fear their parents. So, but when, when you have done everything in your power to lose the respect of your children, because parents should have respect for their children too. When you do everything in your power to lose that respect for your child, then the child can know, it's, I mean, how does the child respect you? The Menendez brothers, their parents did everything in their power to, their father did everything in his power to show them, hey, I don't care about you. I don't respect you. And their fight or flight instinct was to kill them. Once a parent does that, once a parent shows their child, I don't really care about you. Then the child's like, okay, well, I, I, you know, I don't have to respect you. I don't live in your house. You don't do nothing for me. I don't need you. Okay, you don't care about me. You don't do nothing for me. You have shown me over and over that you don't, how you feel about me or what matters or how important I am. Okay, I don't have to respect you. I don't live in your house. Keep your distance. So, but in the same breath, when your parent is, provides for you, keeps you safe, does, you know, what they're supposed to do as a parent to nurture you and foster your growth and well-being and you still disrespect them, Nah, that's not cool. And when you go on these social media platforms, they, they got grown people telling kids that they should, they're on the same level as their parents. And they have the same um, rights and passes as their parents. See, a right and a privilege is different. You may have rights by the law, but you ain't got no privileges. Privileges is what, what you're, you're allotted. Ain't no law saying you got to give your kids privilege. <laughs> privileges are earned. But some kids don't know the difference between a right and a privilege. And I think that's where smoke confusion lies. But I digress. Y'all, I, I, um, this one was kind of long. I had a lot of stuff I wanted to get out, a lot of topics. But like I say, life happens, man. I got a whole lot of stuff going on that I got to get resolved. And that, that does take hits on my, my podcast and my, my availability. But I understand my channel and why it grows the way it grows. And I'm okay with that because I've always valued quality over quantity. I don't care how many subscribers I have, but what's important to me is the content I put out to the subscribers that, that watch it, you know, and I'm gonna keep doing that because this is what I enjoy doing. I enjoy talking, you know, on these podcasts and giving a little bit of insight and opinions and when I'm dead and gone, these will always be there. Somebody can go back and look like, oh, man, Ziggy made this podcast. Oh, that's cool. You know, and I enjoy doing this. So, but that's it, man. Um, oh, yeah, it was October. Halloween. Yeah, this is the Halloween month. 
y'all, I promise one year I'm, I'm going to get into the holiday spirit. I'm going to do Christmas trees, Christmas trees, Christmas lights and stuff one year. I just, I've always been, I've, I don't come from that world, like celebrating holidays and all that. So it's never been a thing for me, but I'm going to get there. I'm, I'm going to get there before all the hair on my head turns gray, <laughs> hopefully. But that's it, man. You know, as, as always, y'all, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. Any questions, leave them in the comments. Talk about anything. I'm an open book. No filter, no hiding, none of that stuff. But until the next YouTube video, be easy.